Hello, and welcome to my first Starfield Challenge run. Today, we are going to figure out how long it takes to beat the Constellation questline. You might be asking, how is this a challenge? Perhaps the challenge is staying focused on such a boring questline? Well, it's actually quite the opposite. Rather than focus in and die of boredom, we will drink from the fire hose of quests and embrace distraction. You see, Todd has attempted to hide how shallow the main questline is by allowing random NPCs to gossip out loud about others' problems. The well's been having brownouts all the time. These chatty NPCs feed a gameplay mechanic in which quests and activities are thrown at you. By simply overhearing these conversations, you non-voluntarily pick up a new activity. These activities stack up in your mission log in sequential order such that once you complete one, the previous quest becomes active. So by setting one simple challenge rule that I must immediately track and pursue any quest I am given, I have created a perfect storm, an unstoppable chain reaction of compounding distractions. So let's find out how long it takes to beat Starfield when you play how Todd intended. Let's meet our contestant for today's challenge. Meet Granny, a hardworking and lovable woman who retired from her career as a diplomat to spend her remaining days helping those in need. She has a few side effects from some dodgy medical procedures over the years, which have made her hardy but resistant to medications. Otherwise, she is a people person who loves nothing more than deep conversations with random strangers. She's made it her life's work to solve even their most trivial problems. I can think of no one better for this journey, so let's kick off with the opening mission to fend off a pirate attack. Of course, as a former diplomat, Granny would have loved to talk this out, but sadly the pirates cannot be reasoned with, and she had to resort to violence for the greater good. Yeah, that's right, come on out, don't mind those explosive barrels. After dealing with the pirates, Granny's guilt is quickly replaced by excitement when Barrett's like, Pleasure to meet you. I'd love to give you that. Not only a free ship, but this Price is Right showcase comes with a robot companion. Next, we're blasting off in space using the state-of-the-art hands-free takeoff feature in Starfield. What Barrett doesn't know is that Granny was deemed a threat to society and had her license suspended indefinitely. But given the stakes, Vasco has agreed to jump in the pilot seat if we have a run-in with the fuzz. You've proven an adequate pilot. Sadly, our luck was short-lived as we were jumped by some Crimson Fleet pirates and now we're in our first space battle. No, oh, why couldn't we talk about this? Space combat's not something diplomats are supposed to do. Granny's racking up quite a body count, but luckily Vasco knows where their boss lives. So Granny decides to head to Crete and apologize and maybe smooth this over. Alright Vasco, remember, we're just here to talk. Unfortunately, their boss wouldn't meet us at the door and his minions aren't very welcoming. Damn it, Vasco, I thought you said those were stun grenades. Granny finally reaches Brogan, and he can't believe who's been rampaging his people. Luckily, he's a reasonable young man, and he and Granny agree to a truce. You see, Vasco, sometimes diplomacy's the answer. With that behind her, Granny makes it to New Atlantis, and Vasco brings her to the Lodge to meet Constellation. Ah, good job, Vasco, we made it. We arrive at the Lodge and introduce ourselves, and it turns out they're a trusting bunch and invite us to join their organization right away. Their young leader, Sarah, wants to join Granny on her first assignment. Can only imagine she hopes to learn a few things from Granny and her years of experience. If only she she knew what she was getting into. Okay, so this is where the challenge really begins. Our goal is to complete this quest line. Our first task is simple enough. Walk across the street to Mast and talk to the Vanguard captain about the lead on another artifact. Granny would love to do it, but she's never been to a big city and needs to pick up a few things. This is a line I heard many times as a kid with my own granny. She'd say I only need a few minutes, but half a day later we've been everywhere and talked to everyone. For this challenge, Sarah's playing the role of young me, as she has no choice but to follow Granny around. This little trip to town turned out to be our first distraction. As we walk by a security guard, we're given the task of talking to Sergeant Yumi. Now we get to take the gnat to the UC security office. Oh god, Sarah, it's leaving without you. <laughs> no. We speak with Sergeant Yumi, and he offers us a part-time job as a security officer. Of course, we'd love to help, so we're sent out on our first assignment. So it's off to the gnat again to head back to Mast to speak with Agent Plato. Agent Plato needs us to pick up a hidden package and bring it back to Sergeant Yumi. What the hell is on your head, Plato? You guessed it. Back to the gnat. Of course, the package turns out to be under a bench, literally right next to the UC security office. So we make short work of this assignment and get back on track. Nicely done. Here's your payment. Don't understand why you couldn't just walk outside and grab that yourself. All right, now we're back on the old neighborhood quest automatically, and we just need to get back to the mass building and talk to the Vanguard. Our seat on the gnat is still warm, so we jump right back in. I love playing a public transit simulator. Somehow this receptionist has eyes in the back of their head and intercepts us just steps away from our goal. Ugh, seriously? Come on. I guess Sergeant Yumi needs us again, so say it with me. Back to the gnat we go. Something just came in. Scuffle. Over at the Dawn's Roost. Turns out there was a bar fight and we need to go talk to a witness about a stolen wedding ring. We. We head straight to the Don's Roost, but the security officer outside has other plans, and we get another mission. Duh, oh, this guy's gonna give us another mission, isn't he? Oh man, come on! Thankfully, Granny gets a senior discount on the NAD. This time we're headed to the viewport to talk to a bartender who's been harassing security. After some small talk, it turns out she'd accidentally hired a smuggler to bring in ingredients for a new drink. She's asked Granny to help get them back from an impound warehouse. This might be a stroke of luck as the warehouse isn't very far and we won't have to take the NAD. We don't want any more distractions, so we're gonna head straight to the warehouse and try and sweet talk the guard outside. Ah, so close. 
But Granny is like Professor X wearing Cerebro. She can hear the problems of everyone in the universe, no matter where she is. And right now, there's a fellow diplomat having some trouble with New Atlantis customs, Look, so the warehouse will have to wait. Time, could you please go to the Free Star Collective Embassy? We offer to help him out by talking to a Free Star Embassy diplomat, so we're headed back to the NAT. If you like and subscribe, I promise not to take the NAT again. If there's anything you should fear in this game, it's the board security officers. Oh god, not more guards. Sarah, be cool, be cool. The been having brownouts all the time. Oh, God damn it, another distraction. At this point, Granny rather swim through a fountain than go on the gnat again. But brownouts in the well can't be good, so she's gonna have to help. The well is the new Atlantis underground. It's a bit slummy, but the people here need help, and Granny's up to the challenge. Wow, I had no idea this place even existed. We meet a UC technician named Louisa and offer to help reset some junction boxes around the well. You should be near the first junction. That's it. Great job. Now, Granny's no electrician, but mindlessly flipping switches is something she can certainly do. Well, no wonder there's a problem down here if the solution is to randomly flip switches, Jesus. Miraculously, we got through all this without any further distractions. We return to Louisa and discover that the Trade Authority is behind the brownouts. We need to help her confront them. So thanks to you, we've got evidence that the Trade Authority is behind the power drain being reported down here. Granny can't wait to stick it to these Trade Authority asshats, but waiting is exactly what she's gonna have to do. Oh my god, these guards are everywhere. Another board guard claims a tree scientist is in distress, so Granny rushes back to the surface to try to help. I'd ask that you move on. He's a bit of a dick, but we agree to help him collect his sensors. Alright, some more trivial jobs for Granny. Come on, pick the stupid egg up already. Three of them are easily found, but it turns out a boy found one and sold it to a pawn shop. Are you looking for eggs too? She's so impressed by this boy's initiative at such a young age, Granny doesn't mind being fleeced for 100 credits to get the last sensor. We head back to the scientist and give him the sensors. He tells us he needs a bit of time to crunch some data, so we do a few stretches. There it is. Ah, shoot! What have I done? That was the wrong button! No! Granny gets a little out of control and accidentally causes a bit of a problem. She's feeling pretty bad and chases down the scientist to apologize. <laughs> I can't believe he'll actually talk to me. What the hell is wrong with this game? I hope these credits are She's surprised to find out he forgives her while bullets and laser beams fly in the background. The guards, however, are not so forgiving, and despite all the problems Granny has solved, she tries to apologize and that does not go over well. She takes a serious tumble and has no memory of what happened after that, but when she comes to, she still has the tree sensors and heads back to the scientist. But then something happened that Granny did not intend. She was summoned by the most unlikely of quest givers. A kiosk. Christ, the guards are bad enough, now the kiosks are giving me quests? Let's see, experience, none. Education, high school. <laughs> Criminal activity, um, I remember nothing. She may not have much experience in the field, but after a quick job application, she's pretty excited to find out she has an interview. The only problem is, it's off world. As Sarah looks at Granny with confusion, I'm reminded of those hot summer days running errands with my Granny. She would see something in a flyer and say, we need to go out of town today. With a sigh, I'd go and grab my Game Boy Color and prepare for what might as well have been a trip off-world. When I started this challenge, I knew it would be hard to avoid some distractions, but I had no idea how difficult this could be. A couple hours in-game, and we've not even managed step one of the first Constellation quest. Now that we're headed off-world, I realize the gravity of this situation. This was not intended to be a series, but I can tell you this is only the tip of the iceberg. I hope you have enjoyed this video, as there are more great adventures for Granny to come, as she tries to help everyone, everywhere. Thank you for watching, and please consider leaving a like or a comment, as it helps please the algorithm. Overlord. Also, subscribe for part two of this series. Bye for now.